Hello students, welcome to Zoology Classroom. In today's class, let us know about thermoregulation process in humans. So before that, uh, let us know what is temperature, uh, why is the thermoregulation or temperature regulation is important, it is needed. So a temperature is nothing but it is the intensity of hotness or coldness. And uh, it is a very, very important feature that affects all living organisms. Why? Because in all living organisms, many biochemical uh, reactions or metabolic activities go on. And all these uh, biochemical reactions or metabolic activities, they are affected by the temperature. Why? Because all the biochemical reactions are catalyzed by enzymes. You know that. And all these enzymes, they will be working uh, up to 40 degree temperature only. So after 40 degree temperature, above the 40 degree temperatures, all the proteins and enzymes <coughs> will be precipitated. And the proteins and enzymes, they will not be useful in precipitated form. So, uh, and uh, apart from that, below the <coughs> uh, temperature of uh, zero degrees also, these proteins and enzymes, they will become freezed. So when they become freezed also, they will not be useful. So that's why if we have to survive, our proteins and enzymes, they should be in working position. But above the 40 degree temperature, below the zero degree temperature, these proteins and enzymes are going to either freeze or precipitate. These two forms will not be useful to have these biochemical reactions go on smoothly. So that's why uh, these uh, above temperature, 40 degree temperature and below zero degree temperatures are very, very dangerous to the living organisms. So that you can think that you may think that we can survive from zero to 40 degree temperature. Okay, we can survive in a range of zero to 40 degree temperature, but that is also not correct. Why? Because uh, I will explain that about this thing in next class, the next slide. So let us know about uh, another important feature that temperature exerts on our bodies. That is temperature also decides water content in the body fluids. So when temperature goes uh, above the normal range, then what happens? due to evaporation process and all those things, we will lose water content or uh, 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 fluid content from our body. So uh, due to this uh, evaporation, due to this respiration, we will lose water content. So that's why temperature also decides the uh, fluid nature or water content in our body fluids. In other words, it also affects our osmo, osmolarity uh, thing. And uh, all living tissues, as I have already said, they will function optimally only within a very narrow range of temperatures. The temperature goes beyond a big, if the temperature uh, of the environment goes beyond this narrow range of temperature, either below the temperature, below this range or above this range, that will uh, adversely affect the life of the individual or organism. So that's why the thermoregulation or temperature regulation is very, very important. And uh, all organisms, uh, uh, either they lose or gain heat depending on environmental temperature. Uh, either they lose the temperature or uh, even they uh, gain the temperature or heat also. All these two things are also going to change the temperature beyond this narrow range of temperature that animals can survive within. So that's why losing the temperature or gaining temperature, losing the heat or gaining the heat, these two things are also, they could be very fatal or that means dangerous to the organisms if we cannot regulate our temperature. So if we want to survive, we have to regulate our temperature, otherwise we will die. So how this uh, temperature loss or gain will occur. So in this uh, diagram, you can see Usually, convection, conduction, radiation, these three are the uh, processes by which heat is lost or gained to the uh, 
uh, non living objects so in in our case in living uh, objects we can either get heat from conduction and either we get heat from radiation or either we lose heat from conduction and radiation but not in the form of convection convection can be seen only in uh, outside uh, uh, our uh, bodies that means especially in water bodies and uh, uh, in the atmosphere only but not in the living organisms body so this conduction and radiation will done will be done in our bodies but not the convection so and uh, apart from this conduction and radiation another thing is also there that is called as evaporation so during uh, extreme hot conditions we will get sweat and uh, that sweat will be evaporated so uh, in the form of sweat also we will uh, lose some body temperature uh, we will try to cool our body temperature so that is also another form of heat loss or gain so due to these activities we cannot stop conduction we cannot stop radiation these are natural processes natural physical processes these physical processes will go on depending on the environmental temperature if outside the temperature is very hot if you touch any hot object automatically that heat will be transferred into your body if you touch that object through this conduction process okay through conduction process if you touch any hot object you will get that heat from that object and if you touch any cool object also the temperature from your body will be lost to that object we know that temperature water everything uh, they will travel from a region of high uh, amount to a low amount so that's why if you are hot than the object you will lose temperature if you are cooler than the object you will gain the temperature or heat so this uh, process is called as conduction so in this conduction both objects will be in contact in radiation you need not to be in direct physical contact with the object so directly through the in the wave forms in the wave forms the heat comes and it will enter into your body if the outside is very hot or uh, if the outside is very cool you will lose your temperature and you will become you will become freeze so that process is called as radiation so and another thing uh, evaporation also will be done and uh, depending on how the organisms are regulating their temperature how they are maintaining their temperature animals are divided uh, classified into two categories one is homeothermic another one is phycothermic homeothermic organisms are also called as endothermal organisms are endothermic and these are also called as warm blooded phycothermic organisms are also called as ectothermal uh, and uh, cold blooded organisms coming to this homeothermal or uh, homeothermic organisms uh, uh, examples for these things are birds and mammals birds and mammals are examples for homeothermal and endothermal organisms these organisms they can maintain their body temperature within a narrow limit range uh, so they maintain a stable temperature body temperature and other organisms like fishes reptiles amphibians and many invertebrates all invertebrates they are phycothermic so they cannot regulate their body temperature so they do not have that regulating mechanisms that's why their body temperature also will be in accordance with the external environment temperature so if outside is very hot their body temperature becomes hot if outside is very cool their body temperature also becomes cool so that does not mean that they can survive in any extreme temperatures so they also have a narrow limit or narrow range of survival in terms of temperature so if that mm, temperature is too much uh, high then these organisms they will die they do not have a mechanism to regulate the temperature but they cannot survive in extreme temperature so they cannot uh, they cannot regulate the body temperature but they will survive uh, only by showing some changes some behavioral changes uh, so due to that behavioral changes only they will try to survive but uh, internal mechanisms are not there and uh, for any organism a neutral zone temperature or thermoneutral zone it is also called as thermoneutral zone tnz 
are neutral zone temperature or it is also called as comfortable temperature or critical temperature or ambient temperature. So what is this uh, uh, neutral zone temperature? It is nothing but it is the temperature at which no active heat loss or no active heat gain is made by the organism. So at this temperature, we will not lose any heat from our body. We will not get any heat from our body. So that what is the meaning of this thing is the amount of heat losing from your body is equal to the amount of heat entering into your body. So both things are equal so that your temperature will be maintained at normal level. So and uh, uh, this neutral zone temperature is uh, the lowest ambient temperature at which the mammals, uh, including human beings, can maintain their body temperature at the basal metabolic rate. And normally this uh, range is uh, uh, in between 28 degrees to 37 degrees centigrade for endothermal organism. For human beings, it is 37 degrees centigrade. For other, for an, uh, for other uh, endothermal organisms, that may be 28. So for some other organisms, it may be 30. So depending on species, human beings have a TNZ, thermoneutral zone temperature at 37 degrees centigrade. Some other species like monkeys, they may have 35 degree temperature or some other cats, they may have 28. So for all endothermal organisms, this neutral zone temperature varies in between 28 to 37 degrees centigrade only. So not above the 37, not below the 28 degrees centigrade. And another temperature is uh, there. This is called as lower lethal core temperature. Uh, the meaning of this lower lethal core temperature is that this is the lowest temperature at which the organism can survive. So if the temperature goes below this thing, the organism uh, faces some uh, difficulties, faces some situations. If they become worse, the organism may die also. For us, it is 26 degrees centigrade. If our body temperature goes below this 26 degree temperature, then we will fa face cardiac fibrillation and finally cardiac failure. So due to the cardiac failure, heart failure, we will die. So this uh, 26 degree temperature is the lowest temperature that we can survive. And the temperature, highest temperature that we can survive is 43.5 degree temperature. So if our body temperature goes above this 43 degree, 43.5 degree temp centigrade, then we will die. So due to heat stroke or sunstroke. So in this 43.5 degree centigrade temperature is called as upper lethal core temperature. So this is the upper limit and uh, 26 degree centigrade is the lower limit. And uh, normal body temperature 37 degrees in Fahrenheit it is 98.6 and range between 36.3 to 37.1 usually not exactly 37. Uh, some variation may be there in between 36.3 to 37.1. In Fahrenheit, it is uh, in between 97.3 to 98.8. And uh, usually the, the medical people, they will uh, measure our body temperature under tongue or axilla or rectum by thermometer, putting in these areas. And oral temperature is usually 0.5 degree centigrade less than our core body temperature. And core body temperature can be exactly measured by uh, placing the thermometer in rectal region. So rectal temperature is equal to our core body temperature. And site for recording core temperatures are rectum, vagina, tympanic membrane. These are the areas uh, at, at which we can measure the core body temperature. And the core body temperature for human beings uh, uh, includes the organisms, or the organs of thorax, abdomen, and head. So in these three areas, our core body temperature will be there. And uh, uh, this is the where our vital organs are located. In head, we have brain. In stomach, uh, we have very important organs like kidney and digestive system. And uh, in thorax region, we have lungs and uh, so all these important organs are 
our core argons uh, located in these three regions so that these three regions temperature is considered as core temperature, core body temperature. And their enzyme systems must operate in optimal conditions. So as these are important organs located in these three areas, thorax, abdomen, and head. So the enzyme systems, the biochemical reactions uh, in these organs should be maintained at optimum level. Uh, so the periphery of the body temperature can withstand some deviation from the core temperature. So peripheral regions uh, like skin and other parts like uh, in these regions, some differences, major differences also may be there. We can survive, but uh, if our body, core body temperatures drops below these ranges, then we cannot uh, be healthy. And what happens if the temperature changes? Uh, what are the consequences? So uh, if it is uh, 27 to 29 degrees centigrade, cardiac fibrillations will start. 30 to 34 degrees centigrade, impairment of temperature regulation. So temperature regulation mechanism will fail in between these values. 34 to 36, uh, 36 degrees centigrade, it is uh, uh, results in, it results in mild hypothermia. And 36 to 38, it is normal range, nothing will happen. 38 to 40, that condition is called as hypothermia, where body will become very hot, and we uh, uh, call it as a, uh, we got fever. And in this condition may arise during exercise also. And 40 to 44, this is due to heat stroke or multiple organ failure. So uh, when heat stroke occurs, multiple organs will fail, and brain also uh, forms lesions uh, or holes in it, so that immediately the organ uh, organism or person will die. So factors that affect the body temperature. So age also, age, sex, <clears throat> diurnal variations, diseases, exercises, emotional factors, these three, the six are the factors that affect the temperature. So age, uh, infants usually they will have uh, more temperature than the adults, uh, five degree variation will be there due to irregular activity, brown fat will be there in them and a premature thermoregulatory mechanism in infants in test born babies uh, thermoregulatory mechanism is not uh, mature so that all these activities they result in the 5 degree 0.5 degree temperature higher than the adults and uh, elder people old age people they will have subnormal temperature so they will have uh, some uh, they will have some lower temperatures than the normal adults due to decreased activity, low basal metabolic rate, weak thermoregulatory mechanisms are the reasons for this thing. And sex also, usually female's body temperature is slightly low uh, due to low BMR and more subcutaneous fat. And temperature increases 0.5 degrees centigrade at the time of ovulation in females also due to the effect of progesterone hormone. And diurnal variations, so in some cases, in summer, uh, <coughs> daytime will be higher uh, and during winter seasons, uh, daytime will be low. So all these variations also re result in the uh, change in the temperature. So it is up to 1.5 degrees centigrade, lowest in the early morning time and maximum in the evening time, body temperature will be there. And diseases in some cases, hypothyroidism, malignancy or cancer condition, and uh, decreased hypothyroidism. All these factors also contribute to change in the body temperature. Uh, uh, exercises also, it can increase our body temperature up to 40 to 41 degree centigrade. And body rate of heat production also can vary from 70 kilocalories per hour uh, uh, when we are at rest to uh, <coughs> something is missed okay so and emotional factors also they play a very important role so uh, during when we are in unconditioned conditions or when we are in tense position so due to the muscle activities uh, zero degree sorry two degree centigrade variation can be seen in our body temperature and heat production so <clears throat> how the heat is pro produced in our body so the most important uh, factors that uh, contribute to the heat production are basal metabolic rate. So all the cells, uh, in all cells, uh, 
the um, uh, basic required biochemical reactions will be going on. So in all these biochemical reactions rate uh, besides this basal metabolic rate and extra rate of metabolism caused by muscle activity. If we are performing some physical activities that increases basal metabolic rate uh, and shivering also increases basal metabolic rate and extra metabolism by the effect of thyroxine. So what is basal metabolic rate? Basal metabolic rate is the rate of biochemical reactions that occur in our body when we are at rest. So when we are doing some muscle activity or exercises, uh, some metabolism will be increased. That contributes to the heat production. And extra metabolism by effect of thyroxine. Thyroxine uh, concentration, if it is increased in our body, uh, high amount of thyroxine increases metabolic rate. Metabolic rate, if it is increased, uh, heat also will be produced in our body. And uh, extra metabolism by the effect of epinephrine, norepinephrine, and sympathetic uh, nervous system. And all these uh, factors also increase the heat production in our body. And chemical activity in the cells themselves, <clears throat> especially when the cell temperature increases, all these uh, extra metabolic activities and uh, extra metabolism needed for digestion, absorption, and storage of food, all these activities, they contribute to heat production in our body. And what factors contribute to the heat loss in our body? Insulator system of our body, usually we will have some <clears throat> uh, what a fat layer below our skin at some regions. So that fat layer acts as an insulator that uh, prevents the heat loss, uh, that causes to the heat loss and uh, uh, blood flow to the skin from body core provides heat transfer. So when internal or core body temperature goes above the normal level, the blood flow coming to the upper layer or skin uh, will bring the heat blood and uh, our skin uh, forms some sweat so that uh, the body temperature will be lowered uh, by evaporation of the sweat. So that body uh, blood flow to the skin contributes to heat loss and control of heat conduction to the skin by sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system also transfers some inside heat or uh, core body temperature or core body heat will be transferred to skin with the help of sympathetic nervous system. Tunnel of loss, uh, radiation, conduction, convection, evaporation, all these things earlier we have discussed. All these uh, processes also contribute to the heat loss when we are having high temperature than surroundings. And sweating uh, also, it is controlled by autonomic nervous system. Uh, sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous systems control this thing. So uh, the sweating process also contributes to heat loss and loss of heat by panting. So dogs usually pant, uh, perform this panting uh, activity. So this panting also uh, contributes to the heat loss and loss of anterior hypothalamic and uh, Preotic area in thermostatic detection of temperature. So this area, anterior hypothalamus and preotic area, these are very, very important. They act as thermostats. So our uh, uh, body temperature controlling mechanism is present in these areas that is, that is called as thermostat. So this uh, regulates our body temperature, this area. So if... Uh, uh, there is any defect in this area, in this uh, thermostat, if there is any defect in determining or detecting the temperature, if this area, if this region, if thermo, this, this thermostat region is not uh, detecting temperature properly, that also may contribute to heat loss. And how it uh, heat is transferred uh, in our body, skin, subcutaneous, subcutaneous tissues, especially the fat of the subcutaneous tissues, uh, all these things, they act as heat insulator of the body. So they prevent heat escaping from our body. Blood vessels are distributed profusely beneath the skin. So beneath the, just beneath the skin, more blood uh, vessels are uh, distributed so that uh, they also contribute to loss heat or gain heat also in some cases. And uh, it's a continuous venous plexus that is supplied by inflow of blood from the skin capillary. So here at this region, the arteries uh, and uh, veins, all these are connected with each other with venous plexus and uh, of capillaries, blood capillaries. So the surface area will be increased with these venous plexuses and uh, 
uh, network of uh, blood capillaries. So that also results uh, helps in heat transfer mechanisms. In the most exposed areas of our body, usually hands, feet, and ears, they are very thin and they will have a lot of uh, skin surface area so that uh, uh, heat transfer will be done with these areas. Why? Because these organisms, they will have this uh, blood plexus, uh, um, <coughs> blood vessel plexus or um, network like uh, things will be uh, high, higher in these areas uh, so that uh, heat transfer will be done with these area, from these areas effectively. And muscular arteriovenous anastomosis, in muscles also this arte arteries and venuses, they form this uh, uh, blood capillary networks. They are called as uh, arteriovenous anastomosis. And uh, in these regions also, high rate of skin flow causes heat to be conducted more from pore body to the skin. And uh, reduction in the rate of skin flow, it can decrease the heat conduction from the pore. So uh, if the blood flow is reduced to the skin, then it results in the decrease in the heat conduction and uh, if the blood flow is increased to the skin areas, these areas, then it results in the conduction of more heat from the core body temperatures to uh, skin. So that uh, what is the meaning of this thing is that uh, when core body temperature goes above the normal level, then blood flow will be uh, increased to the skin so that the core body temperature comes with the blood and uh, this blood loses the heat to the skin, through the skin. And when inside the temperature, core temperature is low, then uh, blood flow will be decreased so that uh, the inside body, core body is trying to save its temperature. If the blood flow is increased, uh, temperature will be lost through this skin surface. So that during uh, when we are very cool, our body core temperature is lower than normal level, then blood flow will be decreased to the skin. Uh, like in this way, skin is an effective controlled heat radiator system. So when uh, we are about to uh, get uh, more temperature inside our core body, then the skin is uh, hel helping us in losing that uh, inside body, increased body temperature uh, in the form of sweat. And uh, what are the channels of heat loss, uh, we have already discussed about this thing uh, through this evaporation process. Uh, okay, yes. Sweat will be evaporated and conduction, convection and uh, radiation. These are the processes, four processes by which we will lose heat or gain heat. And temperature regulation reflexes. So this uh, thermoreceptors are uh, uh, distributed all over our body, uh, even not only on the uh, skin of our body, inside, body, inside organ systems are also, they are distributed with this thermoreceptor. So this thermoreceptors, they will detect the temperature of our organs. And these thermoreceptors are of two types. Uh, they are peripheral on the skin, free nerve endings. They are called as free nerve endings and central in the hypothalamus. So in the hypothalamus region of brain also, central thermoreceptors are there and they are uh, present in spinal cord and abdominal organs also. So the thermoreceptors which are inside the brain, which are inside the spinal cord, which are inside the internal organs, they are called as central thermoreceptors. And thermoreceptors which are present in the skin, why? Because they are peripheral, in distribution so that they are called as peripheral receptors. So depending on the location, they are peripheral receptors and central receptors. So apart from this, uh, based on the thing they are receiving, they are also uh, uh, receptors are two types. Some one kind of receptors, they will receive the heat and the other type of receptors, they will receive the cold conditions. And output from the th hypothalamus is to send to the uh, effectors via sympathetic nerves to say sweat glands, skin arterioles and adrenal medulla, motor neuron to skeletal muscles. So these three organs, sweat glands, 
skin arterioles adrenal medulla and uh, skeletal muscles they will receive the signals from hypothalamus then hypothalamus it will receive these signals from this peripheral and central thermoreceptors so upon receiving the signals from these receptors hypothalamus will assess what is the condition whether the body temperature is increased or decreased so after knowing that thing hypothalamus will generate some orders those orders will be sent to sweat glands adrenal medulla skin arterioles and skin the skeletal muscles to perform some activities and uh, by performing that activities our body will regulate our body temperature so uh, with this mechanism the core body temperature is maintained constantly and the peripheral thermoreceptors help uh, in identifying heat and cold in the thermo neutral zone we have already discussed about this thing uh, so thermo neutral zone is the uh, temperature at which our body uh, will not gain any heat or uh, will not lose any heat that is called as thermo neutral zone so uh, uh, for us it is uh, 37 degree centigrade temperature and uh, the temperature above this thermo neutral zone what happens above this thermo neutral zone vasodilation cannot eliminate the heat as fast as it is produced uh, and this requires another heat loss system called as sweating so at the lower temperatures than this thermo neutral zone vasoconstriction uh, cannot prevent the heat loss from exceeding heat production this requires body to increase heat production so when the thermo neutral zone drops so lower values are there then usually vasoconstriction will occur to prevent the more temperature so to prevent the more heat loss and when the temperature is above this thermo neutral zone usually vasodilation will occur so when vasodilation is occurring what is happening blood vessels will swell in size so that more blood comes to the skin when more blood comes to the skin what happens uh, from more blood more uh, heat will be lost to the surrounding temperature surrounding surrounding so that our internal temperature becomes cool and it comes again to tnz so when we are having lower temperature inside our body vasoconstriction prevents the uh, over blood flow to the skin so that it is protecting the inside heat core body temperature uh, so that uh, this vasoconstriction is helping us to lose the further heat loss and uh, during this uh, above temperatures than this tnz value vasodilation is helping us to lose the excess heat from our body but these two things are not sufficient in these things when the lower temperatures than this tnz apart from vasoconstriction some heat production also is required why because vasoconstriction is preventing the further heat loss but it is not helping us to gain the lost heat so in order to gain the lost heat some heat production must be done and during this thing what is happening heat <clears throat> some heat will be lost in the form of sweating uh, when the temperature is above this tnz but that will not be sufficient to cool our body temperature core body temperature to normal level so that's why sweating is very very important so the sweating uh, uh, causes uh, later after sweating uh, due to evaporation our body becomes cool and uh, so that our body temperature uh, returns to normal levels and control mechanisms of temperature regulation so here nervous mechanisms are there and endocrine mechanisms are there and behavioral or voluntary control mechanisms so three types of mechanisms are there so in nervous nervous mechanisms so, so in the, our brain thermoregulatory center is there this thermoregulatory center takes uh, uh, performs direct action and it also triggers some reflex mechanisms and it also sends some signals through efferent nerves to the effector organs and endocrine system it uh, can it regulates the body temperature with the secretions of adrenal medulla adrenal cortex and thyroid hormones and behavior and voluntary mechanisms also contribute to regulate our body temperature so coming to hypothalamus control 
so as we have already said receptors are there all over the body inside and out, uh, outside the body also outside means uh, in the skin so all these receptors they will receive warm and coolness or heat and cold thing uh, and so this heat receptors and cold receptors they will receive the either heat or cold respectively and inside deep tissues also uh, they also they will receive this uh, body temperatures and they will be sent to the uh, brain through the spinal cord uh, and uh, the hypothalamus receives the information so uh, this uh, thermoregulatory center or thermostat is present in hypothalamus so the thermoregulatory center is having two centers one is heat loss center and another one is heat gain center so heat loss center is present in pre aortic and uh, uh, anterior hypothalamic nuclei region and heat gain center is present in posterior hypothalamus so warming of anterior hypothalamus so when anterior hypothalamus uh, is uh, uh, becomes warm that means if it is releasing receiving uh, uh, signals from the heart receptors or uh, uh, warmth receptors so then anterior hypothalamus recognizes that our body temperature is increased so upon receiving that thing this anterior hypothalamus uh, promotes these vasodilation activity sweating activity hyperopnea activity and uh, injury if it is injury there the injury abolishes the heat loss responses in uh, responses to hot environment so this is another factor so these three things uh, i vasodilation that means uh, swelling in the blood vessels sweating these two things they will help us to uh, decrease the body temperature to normal level and stimulation of posterior hypothalamus so this posterior hypothalamus is heat gain center so it helps us to gain the heat or produce heat in our body so it uh, is responsible for heat uh, heat production in our body so this receives signals from cold receptors so when cold receptors generate uh, action potentials then the signal will be received by this posterior hypothalamus then posterior hypothalamus Uh, sends orders uh, to perform this vasoconstriction action and shivering action also and uh, here in this thing also uh, injuries are also they also abolish responses to cold and interfere with the responses to heat and the pre optic region of anterior hypothalamus is regarded as the thermostat it is very very important why because usually we will feel uh, we encounter this uh, uh heat gain or uh, uh, very hot condition so that it is considered as a uh, it is acting as a thermostat and a set point is maintained by this region why it is considered as thermostat is that another region set point is maintained by this region so what is set point so a, a optimum temperature will be uh, set by this region so that is 37 degree ten- temperature for our body so if the body temperature is going above this thing or going below this thing then only these uh, vasodilation sweating hyperopnea or vasoconstriction shivering all these activities depending on the situations will be triggered by this thermostat only why because it will set a point as a uh, thermo neutral zone in our case it is 37 degree centigrade if it is going above the 37 degree centigrade then it will promote vasodilation sweating and hyperopnea it is going below this thing then anterior hypothalamus uh, uh, instructs the posterior hypothalamus to trigger this vasoconstriction and shivering mechanism so that as it is uh, setting a point uh, optimum temperature point uh, this is considered as pre optic region of anterior thalamus is considered as thermostat and uh, hypothalamus how it is uh, acting directly so when environmental temperature is high uh, all the warm blood will be uh, flowing through the hypothalamus so hypothalamus also will receive blood so that the warm blood will be flowing through this hypothalamus so that warm blood causes the hypothalamus to become heat so that uh, this hypothalamus then uh, triggers the heat loss responses and uh, the heat loss responses uh, 
when the body temperature when the environmental body temperature is low uh, automatically the hypothalamus receives a cool blood so that it promotes the heat production so that in this way hypothalamus as it is receiving blood vessels so when the blood vessels are bringing hot blood it promotes heat loss responses when the blood vessels are bringing cool blood then it promotes heat production responses or heat conservation responses so that is called as direct reaction so another thing uh, hypothalamus performs is reflex mechanisms so in this reflex mechanism sensitive thermoreceptors they will receive uh, this uh, heat or cool information and they are present in the skin so that all these things will be sent to the hypothalamus via cutaneous nerves so and uh, hypothalamus sends information through efferent nerves to through autonomic nervous system so in autonomic nervous system we have sympathetic nervous system in sympathetic nervous system sympathetic adrenergic vasomotor nerves uh, and sympathetic cholinergic nerves so two types of nerves are there sympathetic adrenergic vasomotor nerves they will send signals to cutaneous vasoconstriction to perform cutaneous vasoconstriction or cutaneous vasodilation so cutaneous means skin so uh, depending on the heat or cool conditions so when it is here very body is uh, gaining heat then it will promote vasodilation when the body is very cool than normal level then it promotes vasoconstriction in the skin and uh, sympathetic cholinergic nerves they will send signals to sweat glands uh, so during the hot conditions only it uh, triggers the it uh, stimulates the sweat glands to generate sweat so that our body temperature will be lost and apart from this autonomic nervous system and somatic nerves also uh, the somatic nerves they will send signals to skeletal muscles and uh, they also send signals to respiratory muscles also so the skeletal muscles they will perform this uh, shivering activity so that our uh, um, these muscles they will produce some heat that will help us to gain the temperature or produce the temperature and another thing is uh, uh, endocrine control in endocrine control adrenal medulla and adrenal cortex and thyroid hormones uh, all these things they will uh, participate so in adrenal medulla uh, so uh, uh, adrenaline will be released so this adrenaline is responsible uh, for the <coughs> uh, is a, it, it will be released as a response to the exposure to cold condition so that uh, this adrenaline uh, helps us to produce heat in our body uh, by cutaneous vasoconstriction so this cutaneous vasoconstriction prevents heat loss and metabolic rate will be increased by this adrenaline so that heat will be produced due to this metabolic activities and adrenal cortex uh, it is responsible for when bmr is low adrenal cortex uh, uh, will become this activity will become insufficient then these patients they cannot tolerate cold conditions well so that uh, body temperature becomes low due to this adrenal cortex insufficiency and uh, thyroid hormone uh, thyroxin hormone it is also calorigenic it also helps us to produce heat in our body this thyroxin hormone also improves uh, increases metabolic rate basal metabolic rate so that uh, heat will be generated in our body in this way this thyroid hormone and uh, this uh, adrenaline hormones they will increase metabolic rates and so that uh, they will uh, help us in heat production when we are so uh, cool and in behavioral control also when we are uh, feeling very warm we prefer to be in shades or inside uh, homes so, so that is one type of behavior and when we feel very cool when we then we will try to uh, when we will then we will wish to uh, go into the Uh, sunlight so that we feel some heat so all these are called as behavioral mechanisms and uh, curling up of body in cool conditions when it is very cool we will curl or uh, we will bring all our body parts to close so that uh, that prevents the heat loss from our body surface and uh, wearing this uh, light clothes in summer season and wearing this sweater like things in winter seasons so all these things and uh, having fans or air conditions or reheaters 
central ec systems all these things are also called as behavioral controls and uh, controls and voluntary controls so depending on our wish uh, we will uh, do all these things to bring our temperature to normal level and uh, control of heat production so exposure to uh, cold responses to exposure to cold so shivering uh, thermogenesis shivering mechanism uh, will be done in the muscle contra with the help of muscle contraction so inside uh, this shivering will be going on even we cannot uh, see it from outside so this internal shivering muscle shivering uh, they will uh, produce some <coughs> heat and uh, energy also so that it uh, increases our internal body temperature and non shivering thermogenesis without shivering also some heat will be generated by the metabolic activities so by increasing the basal metabolic rate heat production also will be done without this muscular activity and it will be increased with the activity of epinephrine or epinephrine and sympathetic activity to adipose tissues and the thyroxin hormone so all these epinephrine and thyroxin hormones they contribute to non shivering thermogenesis and effect effect our mechanisms in temperature regulation so how this uh, uh, effect our mechanisms uh, work uh, in order to regulate body temperature so uh, when body is stimulated by cold so direct effect mechanism so heat uh, heat conservation mechanism so vasoconstriction of skin vessels conserves the heat and uh, reduction of surface area curling up uh, also uh, prevents the heat loss behavioral responses are that means wearing warm clothes uh, <coughs> are going into the sunlight all these things also increase our body temperature prevent uh, this thing and uh, pillow erection so pillow erection muscles will be there so that uh, inside in, inside our skin so the pillow erection muscles uh, erections uh, also cause to generate some heat and abolition of sweating So sweat sweat will not be formed in these conditions when we are very cold, and increase heat production. So all these things are heat conserving things, and uh, during the same thing, uh, heat conservation also heat production also will be done. That is uh, due to increased muscle tone or muscular activity, shivering, and increased voluntary activity, adrenaline and the noradrenaline secretions and thyroxine hormone, and hunger increase appetite. All these activities. help us to increase uh, body temperature when we are cold and stimulated by heat when body temperature is above the normal level then what happens so the mechanism that uh, helps us to increase heat loss is vasodilation to the skin sweating behavioral responses uh, they include wearing light clothes are being in shade or uh, switching on ac or fan and all these things are behavioral responses and insensible perspiration increased respiration and uh, excretion of urine and feces all these things they will help us to uh, lose heat from our body and decrease heat production so to decrease the heat production inside our body during this uh, condition so muscle tone will be decreased and uh, secretion of epinephrine will be also decreased uh, or it will not be decreased uh, secreted uh, uh, secreted uh, at all and uh, appetite also will be decreased and apathy uh, and uh, voluntary activities also will be decreased and the tsh secretion and thyroxine also will be uh, will not be secreted in high quantities so all these activities they will help us not to generate heat in our body so when body temperature is high what is actioning uh, happening how it is um, going on how it is regulated let us see so when the body temperature is high so the core body temperature is 37 as we have already said the thermostat region uh, it is having the set point to 37 degree centigrade if the temperature is above the 37 degree centigrade so the thermoreceptors what they will do they will Uh, send the information to this anterior hypothalamus or end preaortic area so in this preaortic area we have this thermostat so thermostat will receive this body temperature is uh, about 37 degree centigrade so then this hypothalamus anterior hypothalamus sends information through the nerves to the sweat glands to 
increase the sweat secretion. So more sweat will be secreted by this action. So more second sweat means uh, more water <coughs> will cover the skin so that more evaporation, when more evaporation is done, our skin becomes cool. So and uh, this also, these nerves also, they will uh, send signals to the muscles to reduce activity so that we will not become active. So that this uh, uh, causes to less heat generated or heat will not be generated at all. And it also sends signals to the muscles of arterial walls uh, of the skin to uh, become dilated. So the skin arterials, they become dilated. So when they are dilated, more blood comes to the skin. When more blood comes to the skin, uh, due to the high temperatures, all the extra water, salts, and all those things, they will form the sweat. And uh, this excess heat from this blood will be uh, lost in the form of radiation and uh, in the form of evaporation. So this is how increased body temperature will be, uh, bring to normal level. And uh, negative feedback uh, <coughs> works in this thing. So this core body temperature, again, uh, as we have seen earlier, so all those uh, activities, after performing all those activities, then body temperature becomes to normal, returns to 37 degrees centigrade. So when it becomes to normal, then what happens, all these receptors, thermoreceptors, they will send the signals to the brain uh, uh, that hypothalamus, they will send the information to this hypothalamus in the brain that body temperature came to normal level. Then what happens, the hypothalamus stops sending information to this sweat glands to secrete sweat and uh, uh, skin arterioles to dilate and muscles to reduce the activity. So all these activities will be stopped. So like this way, negative feedback mechanism is helping us to control the the activities, these activities will be performed only when internal body temperature is above the 37. When the 37 degrees centigrade normal level comes again, then through negative feedback, the activity will be stopped. So this is called as negative feedback. And when the body temperature is uh, below the normal level, then also this uh, core body temperature is below the normal level then the information will be received by this thermoreceptor in the skin and inside body organs. So they will send signals to hypothalamus and hypothalamus sends orders through the nerves to muscles to shiver. So muscle shivering produces heat. So this heat uh, tries to increase our body temperature. And sweat glands uh, will, be uh, will not secrete any sweat during this condition so that uh, no heat will be uh, lost through this uh, sweat form in the form of evaporation. So no evaporation will be there. And muscles of the skin and uh, arterioles, they are directed, they will be ordered by the hypothalamus to constrict so that uh, more blood will not go to the skin so that uh, we will not lose uh, heat uh, from our internal body. And apart from this, uh, as we have seen other uh, uh, hormonal controls also, they will generate heat that uh, helps us to regain the lost temperature. And here also, again, negative feedback mechanism is working. So as the hypothalamus earlier, it ordered to uh, constrict the arterioles in the skin, shiver the muscles, and uh, decrease the secretion of sweat. So uh, as a result of all these activities, body loses less heat, and uh, due to shivering, body gains heat. So as a result, uh, body temperature is returns to 37 degrees centigrade. When it returns to 37 degrees centigrade, this information will be sent to the hypothalamus by thermoreceptors. So when the uh, hypothalamus received the information that body temperature returned to 37, then it will stop sending signals to this thing. So this is called as negative feedback. So earlier it was low, when the body temperature is increased to 37, then it is stopping the further increase in the body temperature. So that's why it is called as negative feedback mechanism. And in some cases we feel fever and a hypo, that is also called as hypothermia. So the fever is the uh, condition where our body temperature goes above this uh, uh, set point set by the 
thermostat during this fever condition the thermostat resets the body temperature usually it is 98.4 but uh, during this fever condition it may set our body temperature above 99 degree fahrenheit also so when we have bacterial or viral infections uh, trauma lesions tumors in the central nervous system exposure to high temperatures uh, uh, consuming drugs all these conditions they will uh, result in fever or hypothermia and pyrogens are the substances that increase our body temperature so this pyrogens also they will increase the set point uh, in our hypothalamus so gram gram negative bacteria they will release endotoxins cell membrane proteins uh, and uh, these gram negative bacteria they also break down some proteins then they will uh, some in cases uh, pyrogens they also release this interleukin 1 and inflammatory mediators like kinins bradykinins protaglandins all these active all these chemicals will be released so uh, the release of all these activities increases our body temperature and cytokines are polypeptides they are proteins so the cytokines are also produced by the cells in central nervous system when the central nervous system is stimulated by the infection of this bacteria virus or anything so in corona virus also the cytokines are um, when the cytokines are produced in high quantities then only the people are dying that is called as cytokine storm due to heavy temperature the internal organs will stop working and the patient is dying and all these things they may act uh, directly on the thermoregulatory center that is hypo thermostat and fever produced by cytokines is due to local release of prostaglandins in glandis in the hypothalamus region and characteristic of uh, fibril conditions so increase heat production by shivering increase metabolism diminish heat loss by the vasoconstriction skin is warm and flushed uh, it subs uh, subsides by sweating so when we got very high amount of sweating uh, this uh, temperature will subside antibodies production also will be high during fever and many microorganisms uh, also destroyed by the fever so all these fever condition why because it is happening in our body to destroy the microorganisms that entered in our body for that purpose only our hypothalamus is resetting the uh, set point to above the normal level so like this way hypothermia also slows the growth of these microorganisms so in this way we can say that the fever condition or febrile condition or increased body temperature is uh, doing some help uh, to us in order to uh, kill the microorganisms or uh, in preventing the slow growth uh, in preventing the high growth of the microorganisms so this is not required and the treatment for this uh, um, temperature is the tepid sponging uh, uh, wiping with a wet cloth and uh, giving antipyretic agents like aspirin paracetamol medicine and this aspirin it blocks the prostaglandin e2 enzyme so that uh, the body temperature becomes to comes to normal level and uh, in some cases uh, depending on what type of uh, microorganisms pathogens entered our body uh, specific antibiotic medicines also have to be taken doctors will prescribe them and heat stroke uh, usually in summer conditions uh, we will see this high environmental temperature results in this uh, heat stroke uh, body gains a lot of heat and uh, impaired sweating will be there so hyperpyrexia uh, 41 to uh, 41 degrees centigrade or 106 fahrenheit temperature will be there in heat stroke symptoms of this heat stroke or some stroke is headache restlessness or mental confusion delirium convulsions cv collapse coma death also uh, if you untreated that also results in this thing temperature are to be brought down to one or two uh, with the uh, ice packs immediately otherwise the person may die and uh, hypothermia is the loss of temperature when the temperature drops below 35 degrees centigrade it is called hypothermia so below 28 uh, uh, centigrade or 85 fahrenheit uh, also called as uh, this uh, lower uh, uh, <coughs> survival temperature so at 27 degree ten temperature metabolism will be reduced greatly and uh, the persons uh, exposed to ice water for 20 to 30 minutes normally 
they will die because of this heart fibrillation and symptoms of this uh, hyperthermia are uh, heart rate bp and all these things will be respiration rate uh, breathing rate will be decreased they will become unconscious and uh, uh, reasons for this thing are exposure to low temperatures and cardiac surgery also may uh, result to this hypothermia and some um, other thing is you know, there for frost bite so when body is exposed to extreme low temperatures surface areas uh, they will become freeze and the freezing of this thing uh, results in the damage of the muscle tissue especially on the legs and the hands and nose so uh, lobes of the ear and tip of nose and digits uh, of the hand and feet will become damaged tissue will be uh, uh, <laughs> lost <laughs> tissue damage will occur so that is called as frostbite usually mountaineers uh, uh, will face this type of situation when they do not wear protective uh gloves are protective so measurements are not taken so this is about thermoregulatory mechanism we'll shall meet uh, in our next class with another topic